we do because the brakes sing. Making our way through the Psalms. Psalms like this. Oh! At the pace we're going, we'll probably be done with the Psalms around the year 2030. When are you going to get to my verse? When we get there. <laughs> verse by verse. I tell you, Proverbs. Proverbs 17, 17. Current events update first. We'll get into this thing. <clears throat> um, local sodomites. Brother. By the way, it's not just uh, people who are engaged in the lifestyle, so to speak. The big thing today is to be an ally. Yep, that's the word. The the sodomite lifestyle is so disgusting that there are only a small percentage, somewhere around two or three percent of the population, who actually engage in that as a lifestyle, as they like to call it. But Romans 1.32 describes what most Americans are today and why most Americans are deserving what's coming. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. That's called an ally. Right. You're an ally, and that means you're, you enable them, you accommodate them, you support them. And they're all sodomites by... Virtue of that association. Most of all your liberal Democrats. Liberals and Republicans. Yeah. Democrats and Republicans who are liberal progressives on social issues. Yeah. They're working to attack Christians and corrupt our children. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was posted yesterday or day before, actually, um, by Worthington Area Democratic Club. Wonderful news. Thank you, Worthington City Council, for leading... For our community, our community being the LGBTQ community. Below that, you'll see Equality Ohio. Congratulations to Worthington, Ohio. Just moments ago, they became the 24th locality in Ohio to pass a local ordinance protecting LGBTQ Ohioans from discrimination. Uh, so the city of Worthington has now passed this ordinance, and if you don't want to rent your house, to a gay or lesbian couple, or if you don't want to hire someone who's a cross-dressing transvestite, who is a man who declares himself and identifies as a woman, or he could identify as an alien, it doesn't matter, you're supposed to check out mentally and adopt this fairy tale, wicked, sick world that the liberals want us all to live in. Uh -huh. And if you don't, you could be in trouble with the city and be fined, lose your license to practice whatever business you're practicing, so forth. Now, they did exempt us as a church, or not just us, all churches, um, and ministries and that kind of thing, as far as I know, the Christian schools and that sort of thing. But they'll eventually come for us, because everybody's real silent, everybody's being silent, no one's speaking up, people won't say anything. They'll eventually come for us, just like the Nazis. You know? They did, yeah. Yeah, Doug? As you uh, 
are giving our, our money to Chick-fil-A and they're, they're putting aside like a billion dollars or something like that to fight against this garbage that you're just talking about. Right. That's why there's been efforts to boycott businesses like Chick-fil-A. Myers, I don't know if you know that, Myers is also uh, considered uh, an, an, an enemy of the LGBTQ. It's not because they are against anything. It's because Myers just won't give them millions of dollars. So just like Jesse Jackson, that crooked piece of human refuse, Jesse Jackson, who heads up the Rainbow Push, Rainbow, Rainbow Push Coalition. I think he's a bisexual myself. And uh, he's definitely a, an ally of the LGBTQ. And he would go around shaking down businesses. That's how he made his money. And he would threaten them. And that's what the LGBT have followed his example. Him and Al Sharpton and you know, the rest. And so they've tried that on Meyer. They tried it on uh, uh, Lowe's. And that's why we don't go to Homo Depot. We go to Lowe's. And, uh, and, any, and the local, local hardware. We'll go to local hardware if we can. So as a matter of fact, we try to buy local anytime we can. Um, but uh, anytime you have to go national, it's good to know there's a Lowe's, there's a uh, Myers. By the way, Kroger is very friendly to the sodomites. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, now I was told that Kroger even refused to go into one community because they wouldn't um, make uh, uh, concessions. concessions to the LGBTQ community. Yeah, so that community. Might so that they voted seven to nothing, so it's unanimous. They yes. did have some people from the community come out and speak against it. Wow. But they gloss over that. Psalm 7 9 says, Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. But, es that. but establish the just. Amen. For the righteous God trieth the hearts and the reins. So we're not done with this, but I just want to say this hang on. There's a payday coming. Yep. There's a payday coming. Mark? Yeah, before you get started, what business you want to, they may be either looking for pickup trucks or anything. They're very conservative. But, uh, you know, the, the place I visited this afternoon, Route 56 uh, Auto Sales, these guys are very conservative. I believe the Christians too. They're out there in London. They're out there outside of London. These guys are Route 56 Auto uh, yeah, just south of Route 40, okay. you know, where Summerford is or whatever it is, and then you, yeah, it's, it's off Route State Route 56. That's one of the reasons why we bought Black Rifle Coffee, mm -hmm. because they are uh, conservatives and they don't go along with all that stuff as far as I've seen yet. These guys said uh, it, it was a good breath of fresh air from Columbus. Yeah. Now, this, was, this is just up the road for us in Delaware County. The public library held a session to teach teenagers how to be drag queens. <laughs> Taxpayer funded. It was yeah. called Drag 101. This is what I was talking about Sunday when I told you about Amberlin and Amberlin's photography um, was being targeted by the libtards and the social justice warriors, as they like to call themselves to try to shut her down because she took an open public stand against this. Yeah, good, for her. good for her. If you want your picture taken, anybody on the internet, anywhere around Southern or uh, Southern, Central Ohio, <laughs> and uh, or if you want to take a plane and fly in, she'd be happy to accommodate you, I'm sure. Ambulance photography. And uh, she took a strong stand and got uh, roasted by it. And Psalm 711 says God judgeth the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. Amen. There's a payday coming. Yep. Got it? Did anyone go to that class you just talked about just for a good laugh? <laughs> it, from what I understand it was so sickening it wasn't funny. What they there were people there who spoke out against it. Okay. But uh I mean, I, and I, did, I, know, I, I say the same thing all the time. You've got to, you got to laugh at how stupid people are and all that. But sometimes the stuff is so disgusting. And to see these teenagers going to the public library and being taught this stuff, 
taxpayer funded. Wow, they want we, they want our kids. Yeah, that's your old point right there. Yeah, they want our kids. They, yeah, I was just talking about that on 610 this afternoon on the drive home. These two guys that are always on the radio. He said, you know what? He said, they don't like it at all. They said, you know what we ought to do? We ought to go call them and see if we can uh, have a gun 101 and see what will happen. Yeah, well, mm. that was already, uh, there's a lady. I might have Melissa, Ack- Melissa Ackers? Ack- Ackerson? Man, I, I meant to put it. I'm going to get her information for anybody you know in Delaware. She's running for the Ohio Senate. Right. She's taking a strong stand against it. She's very well spoken. Yeah. And uh, what was I going to say? What was you saying? What was you just saying? I was talking about these two. Uh, oh, the gun thing. She brought that up. She talked to him and said, hey, then why can't we just, I think either she or someone she, she knows. She said her and her husband do uh, AK-47 training. Yeah. She wanted to come in there and, and they said, Oh well, no, we couldn't allow that. She well, said, Well, how about I just bring my props and we'll do the training here. We won't bring real guns, we'll bring the props. How about that? By the way, that. that's why we support the Alliance Defense Fund. And uh, we give them a small offering every month so that if they come after us, we'll have lawyers. Amen. And I'm not gonna say a lot of it on online or anything, but we're gonna be talking about taking some Steps we have functioned here at BBF is pretty much like a mission church, and we're going to be taking some steps to protect ourselves legally. We'll have more about that later. We're not 501c3, um, but there are other there are steps you can take to protect yourself from this kind of thing. So we'll talk more about that. Here's one last thing in our current events update related to the trans thing. Is here's the reality. The attempted suicide rate among trans adolescents is massive, it's huge. And they do that because they are without God, they are without hope, and they are child victims of abuse. And these adults, not just the drags, but the people on staff at the public library, all the liberals in this country, including Republicans and Democrats, are child abusers. That's right. That's right. And this is child abuse, what they're doing to these children. And then they, those kids start to grow up, and before they're even 25 years old, they're killing themselves in record numbers, and you can blame it on liberals. But they want to blame you. They want to say that because you stand for the Word of God and you call a sin a sin, that you make them feel bad about themselves, and that's why they kill themselves. Mm-hmm. Oh. That's what they say. Yeah. More than half of transgender male teens who participate in this short story, this survey, have attempted suicide. While 29.9% of transgender female have attempted suicide. Among non-binary youth, 41.8% of respondents stated that they had attempted suicide at some point in their lives. What does that mean? Non-binary? It means they're a boy or a girl. But yeah. I don't understand that. So and you're talking about their, whether they a boy claim to be a girl or a girl claim to be a boy or somebody who just basically claims they're neither or both or confused. Or they're a raccoon or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and the, those numbers are massive compared to the general population. But they want to blame you. They want to blame me. They want to blame Christians. And that's the way the Nazis operated. Yeah. The Nazis would cause the trouble and then blame the Jews. But the liberals are causing the trouble. They liberals are st- totally destroyed our school system and still demand that the problem are creationists and the fact that people won't give more tax money. Mm-hmm. Think of that. Yeah. The major cities are run by liberals and they have the highest murder rates in the world because they also have the highest gun control rates. But the problem is the NRA, gun owners of America, and people like you who own guns. You're the problem. That's according to the mentally retarded libtards in this country. Amen. They're mentally and spiritually handicapped right. by their wickedness. Amen. Jesus said, light is coming to the world. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. They loved their uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. They loved killing babies. Amen. And they, they, they own guns, but they don't want you to have one because they'd rather see you die. Every one of those Hollywood hypocrites 
Every one of these politicians who are gun control uh, advocates own guns or are surrounded by armed security. Nancy Pelosi, for one. All of them are. Psalm 916 says, The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. The wicked are given in to Sodom and it kills them. Yeah. Most of the people who are outside of gang and drug violence, most of the people who die because of guns are people who are either liberals or they act like liberals. They don't own a gun and they don't protect themselves. You can be a practical liberal even though you can be against liberalism. Just like a liberal is a hypocrite and owns a gun, a bunch of people die every year because they won't arm themselves. And they act, practice liberalism in their own personal life. And so somebody walks up with a gun. We showed that video just a couple weeks ago. That lady in Grove City. Attacked by a man with a knife. If it wasn't for other people helping her, she'd be dead right now. At the gas station. Yeah. Because she, whether she's liberal or not, I don't know, but she's practicing liberalism. She was unarmed, completely unable to protect herself. I talk about practical atheism. And Christians live like practical atheists. All kinds of them do. They don't pray all day. They don't read their Bible all day. They don't talk about Jesus all day. They, you, they talk in, and say things and do things they shouldn't do if they believe God's watching them. All of us get caught in that once in a while. <laughs> yeah. But that's what the problem is in this country right now. Where a lot of people are dying needlessly. But this is what it's like to try to talk to a CNN viewer <laughs> about these things. And you find these people get their news off of CNN, MSNBC, or Comedy Central. Yep. Yep. It's a brick wall for streamers. All right. So let's get into our song study for a few minutes with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time in your word. We do thank you for the fact that even though we live in such dark times and these are becoming like the days of Lot, we thank you that you've told us ahead of time we can do what's right. We can uh, do what we can to protect our own families by uh, homeschooling and by uh, or, or Christian schooling or uh, some arrangement like that. Uh, we can protect our homes and uh, keep out things that are uh, pornographic, uh, keep out the fake news. Uh, limit the exposure to the lies and deception and propaganda coming through from Hollywood and from the music industry. We can, uh, we can own weapons and protect ourselves from the wicked who would come into our homes and carjack or attack us while we're out. And uh, we can do all the things that you've told us to do. And we thank you for that. But we can wake up every day knowing that it could be the last day we have to put up with it. And that we thank you for more than anything. Amen. We ask you to come quickly. And as we study, may we be excited and enthused to be serving with such a wonderful, uh, prophetic God who has called things before they happen. Who you've called it, and it's coming to pass, and you've given us all the evidence we need for knowing you are in control. We thank you for that and ask your help as we study in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we're in Psalm 17. Hopefully you turned there while I was gabbing. And we'll read the first seven verses. I'll read the odd and, uh, I'm sorry, everybody read the odd, I'll read the even. So join with me in verse one and read the odd. Hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry, Give ear unto my prayer that goeth not out of feigned lips. Okay, two of us are reading. Anybody else going to read? You want to join in? All right, I'll read verse 2 and then join in verse 3. Let my sentence come forth from thy presence. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. Thou hast proved mine heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shalt find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. 
Hold up my goings in thy paths, that my footsteps slip not. I have called upon thee, for thou wilt hear me, O God. Incline thine ear unto me, and hear my speech. Show thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou that savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. All God's people say amen. amen. Now we're not sure when uh, this was written, but we're sure it was King David who wrote this song. And uh, as I said, we're not sure of the event that uh, he was writing in response to, but he felt pretty well under attack. How many of you have ever been there? You ever felt like you're under attack? You got people after you, you're living in a world where uh, you're a hater because you stand for the Word of God? Amen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Well, he starts by saying, Hear the right, O Lord. And regardless of cultural relativity, God has a right standard, and we know what that is. Mm -hmm. There is no debate. One of the most stupid things an evangelical, fundamentalist, professing, Bible-believing Christian can claim to do is want to have a, quote, conversation, quote, end quote, about something that God has already had a conversation about. <laughs> and every one of these churches that lied to their people and conned their people for years to get their money so that they could then turn and become pro-sodomite, every one of them said, well, we want to have a conversation about these things. We want to have a conversation about so-called gay marriage. We want to have a conversation about having homosexuals in the pulpit. We want to have a conversation about having women pastors and deacons. We want to have a conversation about, and so forth and so on. If God has settled it, there's nothing to conversate about. It's over. The conversation has been had. Yeah, Johnny? So I guess, yeah, so like the conversation should be really short because, okay, we'll conversate about it. Let's Here's what God says. Okay, we're done. What now? End of discussion. <laughs> Let's go have some coffee. And what? Well, see. Amen, Johnny. According, according to the clock. <laughs> Isaiah 520 is also uh, to be brought up in this discussion about conversations about God's word. Isaiah 520 says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, yep. that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. There's no reason to have a conversation about things that God has said he's against. He's against killing innocent uh, human beings, period, no matter what age. That means you kill an unborn baby, you're a murderer. Right. That means that you cannot uh, just kill somebody because you don't like them. And uh, so the liberal and the very, uh, most of the time it's a, a liar who is in the congregation, a liar in way, goes around trying to convince everybody that it's wrong to uh, have capital punishment. The Pope's one of those liars. Yeah. And see, mm -hmm. the Bible says that if you shed man's blood killing a man, then your blood shall be shed by man. Genesis 9. Let's look that up. Genesis. Nine. Five. And six. Genesis 9. Five and six says. And surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man. At the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. Read verse 6 with me. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God made he man. Now, that was before the Mosaic Law. People say, well, that's the law. No, it's not. It's before the Mosaic Law. Uh, this is before the flood. And it continued, and if you, we don't have time to run all the references, but uh, turn over to Romans 13. Romans 13, but under Mosaic law, it explains that if someone breaks into your house and you're protecting your life and property and you kill that person, it is not a sin. 
And over and over under the law, it said that if someone killed somebody and they did it premeditated, they hated the person, they did it on purpose, they were to be executed. And they were be, to be executed in one of those gruesome types of ex execution you could experience, which is stoning. And uh, now they had a, they had a, uh, uh, I guess, a, a exception for those that say you're hammering something and your hammer flew off and hit the guy in the head and killed him and you didn't mean to, then you were to immediately go to a city of refuge. Yeah. And you didn't die if it was proven that you didn't do it on purpose. And everybody testified he didn't hate him. He didn't do it on purpose and all that. Matlock would get him off. And then they would uh, stay there until the high priest died. And then they could go home. But uh, the idea that capital punishment is somehow not of God is a satanic lie. Now look at Romans 13. And verse, uh, well, let's just read, begin verse 1. Uh, I'll read verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Now read verse 2. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Verse 3 says, For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Verse 4, for he is the minister of God to be for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So what the word executes right there, when the government puts to death a murderer, the government is executing wrath. We just call it an execution. It's Bible, biblical. And so if someone comes in your house to hurt you and your family, there's nothing spiritual about a man watching somebody rape his wife and children or uh, brutally murder them or uh, even just to take the property and, and uh, traumatize them. And I've asked people to show me anywhere in Scripture where it was ever shown that a man of God allowed that to happen to his family. It's not in there. There are men of God and there were people of God who were brutally brutalized by the governments, by, and that includes Rome, includes the Muslim invaders, includes the inquisition of the popes. <coughs> but if you, what a lot of, I talked about Sunday, a lot of history books are expunged of a lot of information Christians don't know. And what they don't know is for 2,000 years, uh, Christians have practiced self-defense. Now, there were groups like the Waldenses who were caught off guard and didn't have a lot of ability to defend themselves, and they were overrun for a while. But then they regrouped, got up in the mountains, let the popes and troops come into the valley, let them all get into the valley, then shut off each end and killed every one of them. That's your Christian history you're not told about. Yeah, John? I'm just, Abraham is a good biblical example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When Lot was kidnapped, he went and gathered his guys and killed everybody. A posse of 300? Yeah, he went and killed everybody that was responsible. And he got all the stuff and didn't miss one person. Didn't yeah. Miss yeah. One. yeah. So, Anyway, what we have is a growing number of Christians out of ignorance who are calling good evil and evil good. And it's not just abortion, but that's a big one. It's not just Sodom, but that's a big one. But it's also this pacifistic idea that we're supposed to kill the unborn and protect the guilty. And you can thank the Pope first and foremost for that kind of stuff. Calling evil good and good evil. Evil good and good evil. Hear the right, O oh Lord. There is a right. Amen? Yeah. There's Bible, and it's right. Continue, says, and Attend unto my cry, give ear unto my prayer, that goeth not out of feigned lips. Those last two words are a key there. Some people think that just by praying, God owes it to you to answer. <laughs> well, if you have feigned lips, your prayer will be ignored by God. So, good question. What's feigned lips mean? Well, 
Um, I think we can see from the text, but I just like this, what's in uh, Webster's 1828, he it says it's invented, devised, imagined. In other words, some people pray like they don't think God knows they're full of it. Right. <laughs> they, yeah. they pray and they're just full of hogwash, we'll say. Just be nice. Amen? <laughs> they just are full of it. But they have faith, and a lot of times it's public prayers. Public prayers come from feigned lips a lot. Well, then they, they're surprised. You know, actually, I have to say this. The National Day of Prayer every year, I ignore that completely. I used to attend those things. And you talk about feigned prayers. I mean, what we need isn't a National Day of Prayer. We need a National Day of Repentance. Mm -hmm. And they get up there. They'll have everybody from the Catholic priest to the rabbi to the Muslim imam getting up in some of these things and praying. It's a godless, satanic mess. Yeah. I don't care you know, how culturally insensitive this sounds. If you don't pray to Jesus Christ or to the Father in the name of Jesus Christ, if you're not praying to God in Jesus' name, and you're not a believer who is born again and a child of God praying in Jesus' name, your prayer gets nowhere. God, I'm not saying God will never answer a prayer of an unsaved man. He might. Because he knows your heart. He knows, well, I'm going to spare you this time. I'll, I'll answer this prayer to spare you because I know you, I, I can tell your heart's right you're toward me and you're going to get saved. You know what I'm saying? That might happen. But by and large, that's the exception. What God's listening for is a prayer from somebody who is calling on him for salvation. Amen. Or somebody who's been saved and is thanking him. Thank you for saving me. God knows the difference between sincere biblical prayer and a big show. Amen? That's why, you know, when I pray, I don't, I, I pray in front of y'all. I'm a lot more, I try to be a lot more, uh, I just try to be considerate of the fact you're in the room. You don't need to hear all the stuff I say to God and I'm by myself with God. Amen? Mm -hmm. God de never told me to air out my dirty laundry in front of you. Nope. And I don't want to hear yours. That's not a feigned prayer. That's just being considerate. Uh, but when you're alone with God, that's when you really ought to get down to the bare knuckles. That's when you admit, dear Lord, I know I'm a scumbag. Lord, I know I'm wicked. I know I deserve hell. That Matthew 6, it talks about when you give your alms to the Lord, you know, you don't feel like you've got pain. Yeah. Well, there's vain repetition. That's a way of vain prayer. Yeah, exactly. Then there's just to be heard. That's right. You get a lot of that offering time in churches. <laughs> Brother so so you pray over the offering. Oh, dear Lord! <laughs> Allow me to be as loud as anybody who's ever been in this church building <laughs> as I pray for you. Dear God. <laughs> and then they go, and I'm sat through some of this prayer thing. <laughs> If he's sincere, then that's fine. But man, it doesn't sound sincere to me. And I don't understand why anybody would pray like that. Because, uh, you know, like I said, God's not, it seems, obviously God's not impressed with that kind of stuff. God answers sincere biblical prayers, but in his time and in his will. Amen. You be around my prayer. He'll hear, attend unto my cry. Well, you better be patient. He's not at your beck and call. Even if you give me a $10,000 seed fate offering, that doesn't mean anything to God. As far as prayer and answering your prayer, there's no connection. Huh? Cast and bind. Yeah. <laughs> Cast and bind. A lot of hogwash about prayer out there being taught. Look at verse 2. It says, let my sentence come forth from thy presence. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. In other words, we trust his judgment. Genuine believers have nothing to fear from God's justice and righteousness. When you pray, you know God is just. You know he knows everything. You know he doesn't get it wrong. Prayer is more about us getting ourselves in tune with God's will than it is changing God. Amen. And some of the dumbest prayers I've ever offered was trying to change God. 
and uh, don't let that stop you. All of us pray dumb prayers, amen? I mean, I, I, I prayed some dumb ones. None of your business. <laughs> Look at First Timothy 4. First Timothy chapter 4. Verses 9 and 10. I love them a couple times. Paul says, This is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation. And in other words, he's saying, uh, Listen close and get right. Because <laughs> this is right, and if you disagree, you're wrong. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Verse 10, read it with me. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. That, whenever you're, whether it's social media or the family gathering or you're in school or you're at work or you're just out on the street and someone's mocking you, someone's scoffing at you, my favorite scoff is this. Man, what's wrong with you? Don't you realize it's 2019? Oh, I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? Just say, I see 2020, what's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. But I would look down and say, what does the calendar have to do with anything? The year, the date has nothing to do with what's right and wrong. As we started in verse 1, hear the right, look at your calendar to find out what's right. It doesn't say that. But you hear that all the time. How many of you heard that? Oh, yeah. I mean, you hear it all the time. You would see it on the news and everything else. These people live in the dark ages. And then when they pass these laws against abortion in Alabama, and I, I think it's Iowa here in Ohio and other places, and there's these people trying to push us back to the dark ages. It's like, no, abortion is the dark ages. Because it's wrong. It, what matters, what, what makes something dark ages? Because it's dark. Not, it's not, it's dark ages means it's wicked, it's black, it's dark. The dark ages was a time of ignorance of God's word and, and, and total sin. Yep. Now, I mean, some people defend and say, well, it wasn't as bad as it's being portrayed in some areas. Maybe, but it was still called the dark ages for good reason. Yeah, Johnny? I just finished. So the, so the only place the calendar has any meaning is, of course, when you're looking at the dispensations. But that's not a moral thing. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. That, that'll tell you, I think. And none of those people God. that say that even know what the word dispensation means. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, you're not talking to, you know, Bible believers when they say that. That's right. Now, verse 3 says, Thou hast proved mine heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shalt find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. That, that sounds a little boastful. But we can walk daily with the Lord and commit to stay on the right path. But the next verse holds the key. So as you read that, as I said, it may sound a little boastful. Thou hast proved my heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shalt find nothing. That sounds a little boastful. But he says this, I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Now, read verse 4. Concerning the works of men... By the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. See, he's given all the credit to God. It's by following the words of God. I love how it says, by the word of thy lips. And uh, we've got it in writing. But it came from God's lips. Now I know that's anthropomorphic. anthropomorphic easy for me to say. Yes, yes, very easy. But what it's saying is, in our finite little pea brains, <laughs> for us to think of the most intimate manner of God to give us his word is to kind of picture it coming off his lips. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what you got in your King James Bible. Yeah. It is by the word of thy lips, not by our positive thinking and willpower. And I say that because... Verse 3, he wasn't boasting of the fact that, you know, he's he wakes up in the morning, looks himself in the mirror and says, you're going to do this. I mean, there are these people pay money for that kind of stuff. They'll watch a video and they'll say, first thing you do is wake up in the morning and look in the mirror and give yourself a positive confession. 
right. Yeah. I've, I've, never, I've never paid for them, but I've actually got them, like at a thrift store, I bought one one time, and it was like 50 cents. I'm like, I just want to see what's on this thing. <laughs> it was one of the best comedies I've ever seen. I mean, the guy was as serious as could be, and it was like that Stuart Smalley character on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. You're smart, you're good looking, and doggone it, people like me. You know, that's what... <laughs> <laughs> people paid good money for this. And when they originally bought it, they paid like a hundred bucks. Yeah. I paid 50 and cents lives, and thought I wasted in, that money. <laughs> and he lives in a van down by the river. <laughs> <laughs> he probably could have bought a Johnny. Coke ball with that. With that 50 cents. Daffy says, I have positive mental attitude. I'm positive, I'm mental, and I know I have attitude. Yes. <laughs> That's what I think of these people who are all caught up in this positive stuff. It's just think, and folks, I'm not talking about the unsaved world. I'm talking about 104.9, the river. I'm talking about what's being preached in most of the churches in this county that call themselves evangelical. They just tell you, you know what? You need to feel better about yourself. You know, God just loves you so much. He had to have you. That's why he died on the cross, because you're so wonderful. And that's, it's an antichrist message. Oh, it is. It's totally not Bible Christianity. But that's what these people are stuck on. And you'll, you'll see it on social media. People post these things. Women are the worst about it. <laughs> yep. Yep. These women, I'm a woman. I can do anything I set my mind to. You just want to go, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Not that I would do that. But I'm saying that's what would shut them up. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, Jenny and I and Johnny, we were talking about these superhero movies. Where these little 110 pound girls take a guy like Charlie and grab him by the beard and go, wham, 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 wham. And then these other little girls are like, yeah, I can do that. Then they try it and they get, wham, 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 wham. <laughs> yeah. I am telling you, there are people who believe that stuff. They start to believe it. I'm a girl. You know what is ironic? Is because of liberalism. A lot of women around the country are finding out otherwise because men are identifying as women and beating them in wrestling and all kinds of other sports mm -hmm. where women are finding out they can't even compete. Running the race. These track and field sports, the men who are identifying as women are blowing them away. Of course. That's why they've always had separate, you know, women's and men's sports so the women can have a chance. <laughs> The Bible says you're the weaker vessel. That's not an insult. It's a scientific fact. <laughs> and he tells you that so that you realize you don't want to walk up and start a fight with some guy that's, you know, like muscular, 250 pounds, and go pound you. John, this is, this is a good time for the things that are different or not the same. Yes. Oh, yes. oh really? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Men and women are different. Amen. Yeah. But even the men who think you're big and macho, I've seen, well, you know, you think about it, and this is not meant to be an insult. I remember Muhammad Ali, first he was Cassius Clay, and then he decided to adopt a slave name, Muhammad Ali, and he would, and then you remember Mike Tyson? You know, I remember watching these guys fight. Man, they, they just look like they would knock your brain out of your ear if they punch you. But there came a day. Mike's still kind of, I don't, I still wouldn't pick a fight with Mike Tyson. Don't get me wrong. But he, I don't think he would kill me. Back then he would have killed me with one punch. Now it'd take two. <laughs> but Muhammad Ali got that disease, Parkinson's, I guess it was, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And the last decade of his life, he'd walk in a room and he'd and what? And I'm not making fun. What I'm saying is, you just want to look at it and say, Muhammad, you're mortal. You thought you were tough. You're a shell of a man. And if you die right now, you're going to split hell wide open. Pride. They sit with people like that. I think I read it about Muhammad Ali, but they go home and they just watch the good old days on video all the time. Living in the past. Zechariah 4 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. That's what it's all about. You realize for all of eternity, 
we are going to be basically, for lack of a better term, infused with the Spirit of God. We are going to exude the light of the Lamb of God. And throughout eternity, we are going to be something beyond nuclear. And never get weak, old, Amen. tired, or sick. Amen. And it ain't going to be you. It ain't going to be me. We're not going to be on the treadmill and lifting weights to get there. We're just going to be there in his presence. Amen. And it will make us like Jesus. We won't be Jesus, but we'll be like him. Amen. Verse 5 says, hold up my goings in thy paths that my footsteps slip not. So there, again, he's, all the credit is the word of, from the lips of God. And here he's saying it's him, it's God who keeps us from slipping. The world is a slippery place filled with pits and traps. You see it all the time. People who get their eyes off of Christ and off of the cross and off of the purpose of the church preaching the gospel. And off of the necessity of daily reading the word and prayer and witnessing so that you can remain built up in his spirit. They get their eyes off of that. Next thing you know, their eyes are on the opposite sex or even the same sex these days. <laughs> and their eyes are on pornography. Their eyes are on material things. Their eyes are I've seen preachers quit the ministry so they could sell things to try to get mammon quit the ministry and spend all their time going back and bugging all the people they once preached to to try to sell them something. <laughs> Happens all the time. Men and women. Verse 6. Read that with me. I have called upon thee, for thou wilt hear me, O God. Incline thine ear unto me and hear my speech. See, there's you're no longer with feigned words. You're giving him the praise. You're saying it's the word from his lips He's the one to keep you from slipping. And it's no small act of faith and allegiance in the eyes of God whenever we call on Him with unfeigned lips. Amen. Then he says, verse 7, Show thy marvelous loving kindness. And I just want to say this. He's not ordering God. <laughs> it's an appeal, not a command. And... Uh, when we consider the ways, as it says in the rest of the verse, he says, show thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou that savest by thy right hand, them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. All glory is going to God. Amen. And God's people say amen. 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 <laughs> Just a final word, we'll take a couple Q&As. Questions. Oh, thou that savest. How often do you think about the fact you're still, even today, you should still be thinking, I'm saved from hell. Amen. There's a song I'd love for us to learn. The chorus simply says, Look what God gave me when he saved me from hell. And the song talks about how I didn't even care whether I had a mansion. I didn't care about the rewards. I didn't even care whether, you know, all these other things I heard. Just the fact you saved me from hell. Yeah. That's just for starters. Yes. <laughs> just for starters. Saved from many consequences of our own sins. Now, you know, if you get saved and you've got some communicable disease like AIDS, that God's under no uh, requirement to heal you. Um, if you're, you're saved because you uh, smoked or smoked pot or whatever and you got lung cancer or emphysema and you get saved, that doesn't mean he's going to remove the consequences. Um, you know, obviously if you've had, you know, fathered children out of wedlock and that kind of thing, the children are still going to be there and out of wedlock, you know. Um, there's a lot of things, but there's also a lot of things that he does by his grace and mercy when you get saved, consequences seem to disappear. Thank God. Amen. We don't deserve any of that. Nope. You know, he saved me from hell and from some of the consequences. Let me tell you this. Now, I still save my COPD 
I believe at least the bottom line uh, underlying symptoms and everything came from my years of abuse of, uh, you know, smoking pot and cigarettes and drinking and all that kind of thing. But uh, I'll be 50 in September. I got saved in, in 1990. Good so 2020, I'll be a 30-year-old babe in Christ. And uh, that's longer than I thought I was going to live. It really is. Did not think I'd see 50 years old. Also, this is an ought to. Ought to be saved from the fear of man. Ought to be saved from what people think of it. Peer pressure. Ought to be saved also from the fear of them killing you. Threaten me with heaven. <laughs> Amen. I'll kill you. <laughs> Make it quick. That's all I ask. I'm not out there begging for it. I don't think that's biblical. Somebody shows up with a, uh, you know, hope it's not a machete, <laughs> but, you know, come to kill me and I can't defend myself. Now, I don't believe there's anything wrong with defending yourself. But if, if you're caught in a place, like if a lot of the early Christians were, you know, on the run and unarmed and all that kind of thing, nothing they do about it. They got thrown in the lions, you know, crucified and set on fire by Nero. Terrible things. But even those who went through the terrible things knew it, this is temporary. This is just going to hurt for a little while. And then I'm going to be with Jesus in glory. And the final thing, well, I might have two. I think I saved from fear of death. I've seen Christians afraid to die, but they were always Christians who neglected the Lord, neglected the Word, neglected their relationship with the Lord. And once in a while, you know, you have people who go into dementia and that sort of thing. You know, that's that's a whole different <coughs> ball game. But I've seen a number of Christians. Jody Dukes, man, I'll tell you what. Yeah, Jody was one of the most amazing people. Yes. If you didn't know her. She was one of the most, and she knew she she knew her days were numbered, and was just as sure of her salvation and ready to go. Happy. And it's an amazing um, honor to minister to her. A lady named May, one of the first people I ministered to uh, on the deathbed, and her family, a bunch of them are. I don't know if any of them were saved. She was just hand in the air, ready to go. <laughs> Amazing thing to sit there and watch. And then to look at her family, and they all knew she was ready to go. They really, I think they believed she was saved and going away to heaven, and yet they still weren't right. Yeah. But it's a beautiful thing when someone's really saved and sure and ready to go. And the final thing, even in death, we are immediately placed into eternal bliss. It's graduation. Yes. Stepping through that door. It's the final graduation. I've often said, just reading that about Paul and the man, that I believe was most likely him, that's caught up to the third heaven. I, I've talked about how some people have, uh, there are some people who suffer more than other Christians for various reasons. I think Paul's suffering was probably as much about what he saw and had to come back and put up with years of abuse mm -hmm. before he could get back to what he saw. That would have been painful. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That same thing was, uh, same thing was Lazarus was the same way. He died and he... Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't tell us... Yeah. You know, it doesn't tell us... So some have... Speculated that uh, the Lord put Lazarus kind of in a sleep, um, and you know he didn't actually see paradise and come back. But we don't know because there's nothing said one way or the other. So that'll be interesting to find. Hey, Lazarus, by the way, he's gone for four days. What is he doing? Where are you at? Yeah, Jenny. Uh, Stephen asks. 
He says, I've heard a lot of preachers talk about prayer formulas. What do you think of the concept of a prayer formula? I don't think there's anything wrong with having kind of an outline that you follow in your mind or something like that. Just got to be careful because, it, it, again, if it becomes ritual. too methodical and ritual, yeah, right. ritualistic, repetitious, you know, yeah. But uh, I, I heard a lesson on the, uh, <coughs> they call the Lord's Prayer, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, you know. That, that's better called, I believe, the Disciples' Prayer. No. Lord's Prayer is John 17. No. But uh, anyway, um, what's called the Lord's Prayer there. It, it's, it's kind of formulaic, and you can follow line by line his prayer by starting, and I've done it through, through the years. I've prayed, you know, start with praise, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I just always started my prayer and said, Lord, I love you. Most times it says, I love you. <laughs> I love you, Lord. I love everything about you. I love what you've done for me and so forth. And, and uh, how be thy, thy kingdom come. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. We pray for the rapture. That's why we start our prayer like that. You'll hear me even that. Even that, that's an example. I pray and praise the Lord and go right into the rapture. Um, so, that, again, I'll go through the whole thing. But that's an example. The Lord's Prayer can be a formula you follow. Um, but again, be very careful. And, and just for the sake, I know Stephen doesn't think this way, but just for the sake of some who might be listening, things like the prayer of Jabez, <laughs> don't get into that. Um, that's a repetitious prayer. People just went around praying the prayer of Jabez. Oh, increase my, you know, <laughs> that's not what that was intended for. Um, enlarge my coast. Yes, enlarge my coast. <laughs> and uh, um, they did that at. Oh, I, you know, I bet probably 90% of the churches in the 90s got yeah. into that stuff. Oh, yeah, and you yeah. go for 30 days, and you're going to receive all of it. Yeah. Oh, I hated that. Yeah, Charlie? It's kind of a jump on topics, but just talking about people who, you know, they get full of themselves, and they think they're something special. And, you know, like, people talk about, like, what they're going to say to God. I got to talk to God at work. And he's like, well, I think God will understand this, that, or the other. It's like reality, like in the natural world, God gives us an understanding. If you go find a chimpanzee, you're gonna you're gonna die. Like if you go find a bear or a gator, like, you'll die. And it's like I don't care who you are. If you if you go unarmed and you fight one of the natural creatures that God put here, He gave us an under He gave us the option to understand the reality in the physical world, in the yeah. art world, and then be spiritually, it's like you know, like people. I think that's why people live like it's a problem of living in cities. We don't see the natural world. Yeah. We don't understand death. We don't understand illness. Because it's all there's this this white coat of paint over everything. We don't see the reality that's of life right. anymore. Yeah. And that's like liberals you, you don't have a whole lot of liberals in the country because if you see a coyote come and eat your dog, you're not gonna think that you're that tough anymore. Yeah. You know, it's just it, yeah. you know, a way of shaping your mind back towards reality. Yeah, John. Is it a, what he was saying, if it, if it references the verse, don't tempt the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's what that is when putting yourself in danger on purpose to try to get God to do something. And the ultimate is to think that you're going to be able to put yourself in a position where you're going to debate with God oh, at the judgment. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what, you know, you hear that from people. They're like, well, I just think God will. Understand that I was who I was. You know, me and Jesus, we got our own thing going. You know what I mean? <laughs> and God's going to go. What? <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, that obituary that was in there where, you know, I talked about that a few weeks ago. There have been, there've been a number of obituaries like that. You'll see them every once in a while. And it's just arrogant right to death. Right to the death, just as arrogant, godless, no fear of God. Surprise. Yeah. Think about that when they die immediately. Immediately. Every one of these people, that these Hollywood types and famous people we know, but could be your relative, your neighbor, or whoever, co worker, go right to death thinking. That, you know, I'm Mr. Big Guy and I'm going to have a talk with God when I get there. And the moment they die, 
They wake up in hell. They lift up their eyes in torment. Just like the 16 rich man. What a wake up call. All right, that's close. Have a word of prayer if you want to stand, if you could. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time of your word. We thank you for the truth that you've given us. We thank you for those who've watched online. We thank you for all those who watch weeks, months, and possibly years ahead. We just pray, Lord, that you continue to help us to be faithful as a local church ministry and on an individual level. That we serve you with our lives, Lord. And we do so because we want you to be glorified. Everyone in this room, everyone in this church fellowship, everyone watching online as part of this ministry, we are all wicked sinners saved by the grace of God. And we can only give you the glory. Jesus, in the name of Jesus alone, deserves all the glory. And we thank you in his precious name. Amen. 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 All right, let's fellowship with the fellers. Feel free to get some good left over downstairs. Well, bye, Atlanta. We gotta go. The music has started. There's Johnny. He's awesome. That's my brother. Alright, bye, guys.